Hello and welcome to the tenth video in this series programming a chess engine in GUI and JavaScript. So in this video we're going to start implementing the well slowly implementing the information we need and functions we need for setting up a position on the board. If I just get the uh, browser up here you see on the brow on the application itself here we have something called set position and this is basic this is a position string what's known as an FEN string or Forsyth Edwards notation if you put that into Google FEN chess you'll find the wiki page for that and that gives a really good description but essentially how it's broken up is is into the description of the board if I've got another one here which I'll take as an example and just quickly put into the top of the code here with a comment just to explain how it works so what we basically have is we have six sections but a minimum of four sections and the first section here that I've just highlighted is the setup of the pieces on the board and they're separated by a forward slash and each of the letters and numbers in between each collection in between the forward slashes indicates a rank and it starts at the back rank a two would mean two empty spaces and then the pieces are denoted by P for pawn, N for knight, B for bishop, R for rook, Q for queen and K for king and uppercase is white and lowercase is black so this would be two empty squares, a black rook, a black rook, three empty squares and a black king and it drops down through the ranks the next is the side, W or B, the side to move the next is the castling permission if any so if white had castling permission king side there would be a big Q, queen side uh, a big K, sorry, a big Q for queen side, then a small K for black king side, and a small Q for black queen side castling, and nothing would simply be a dash. The next one that comes along is the en passant square. It's either a dash or in algebraic notation, such as E6, the square itself, and sometimes the next two are the 50 move rule and then the half move count, so the number of play, and the 50 move rule we've already explained. But in this engine, we'll simply be setting up the first four parts of this information. So if I take this, uh, if I just undo this and undo my changes, if I now take this position as it was and just copy it and go back to the browser in the app that I'd written and just paste that in here and set the position, you'll see that we get two empty squares, a black rook, a black rook, three and a king, and then the next rank with two black pawns, three empty squares, two black pawns, and then one empty square, and so on all the way down. And then the position has white to move. And what we're going to do now in this video and the next video in the program is actually write the function which allows us to take in this position and set the board up appropriately. So the first thing we need to do, as always, is a couple of definitions and these are definitions which really influence later on in the program but because we're setting up the position we'll be resetting the board sort of for a, a clean position we need to add those in now really so in the definitions here just below the bool definition I'm going to add in max game moves max position moves and max depth and what max game moves is we're going to store the list of moves that the board has in a given position all in one array and it'll be indexed by the current ply that the board is thinking at. Don't worry about that at the moment because we'll come across that later when we start generating moves for the position. But we need to know beforehand, well I like to set because I come from a C background um, already allocate the space for the array beforehand and I'm never expecting to have more than two I've put 2048 half moves in a game. I don't think there's a game of chess which has gone by 500 full moves, so there should be more enough, more than enough. And in a given position, I don't expect any more than 256 moves to be generated. This is also comfortably inside the maximum possible. And the max depth is simply the max depth that the engine will search to. This comes much, much later, but we can put these in now because we're going to need to add a couple of definitions to our game board. And what we're going to add to the game board some more variables which I'll add underneath pos key here and these are oh, that shouldn't be a var sorry and these are simply the move list which I've just explained which will be the depth times the number of position moves 
the move scores, which would be the depth time, the number of position moves, because moves that are generated will be given a certain score. And this index by depth is simply where the move list will actually start for a given depth. But don't worry about this now. It's just the problem is we need already when we reset the board to actually clear up the uh, move list start indicator, reset that to zero. But we'll get into the details of how these three arrays work together later when we start generating moves. OK, so now we can think about actually writing our function to pass in our FEN string. So I'm just going to create some a lot of space at the bottom of this file to be able to scroll things up a little bit. OK, and below the generate position key function, I'm going to start creating a new function. I'm going to call this pass FEN. And the FEN here will be the string that we actually take in in the format that we just saw in the browser here to set up our board correctly. And the first thing we need to do is we need to actually, before we do anything inside that function, do what we're going to do in the video today, and that's actually reset the board, call a function that we haven't actually called yet. Before we start putting a position in, we need to actually clear our board so that there's nothing on the board, there's nothing in the piece list, etc. And that's what we're going to implement now. So we'll come to reset board in this way. And resetting the board is actually obviously very simple. It's not very complicated at all. We're simply clearing everything up. So as I always like to do, the variable for looping, index here. And now, one by one, simply going to make the loops through the board to clear everything up. The first thing we do is set all of the pieces in all 120 squares to off board. And what we then need to do is loop through the 64 internal squares on the board and set these to empty. Of course we can do that now because we've set up, if you remember, inside defs I think in a previous video, we've now set up this square 120 here where we can take a 64 base square to get the 120. So we can already shorten our array a little bit here and just do a 64 square loop and use this to set the internal squares now at pieces empty. So that will then leave the border squares at off board but now we've got pieces empty for all of the 64 internal board squares on the array. The next thing we need to do is we need to go to our piece list and we need to set all of these, we're just going to set to pieces dot empty as well. Remember the pieces is what returns for a given index of the piece number and the piece type the square that particular piece is on. But we'll just reset all these to zero for now. And then two smaller arrays that we just need at the end here. One is to set the material for the game board. I think we've already added material in, at least I hope we have, yes, here. We'll set the uh, material to zero for each, and we're also going to set the number of pieces on the board also for each type, obviously, to zero. And the last thing that remains for our game board is, and I'll just scroll this up a little bit now, is to set the side to colours both, so it's not actually black or white, it's no side at all, and this is useful for the GUI later, which you'll see. We'll set the ampersand square to no square, and then the 50 move for all, the ply to zero, the history ply to zero, cast permission to nothing, position key to nothing, because we'll generate that once we've set up the board. And here is why I've added already the move list on, because I didn't want to forget it later, but we need to also, at the given ply 0, set the move list start to the beginning. But don't worry about this now. This will come much later on when we actually start generating moves. OK, so fairly easy there. Resetting the board and getting ready to set up our position string on the board. So I'll leave it there now for this video. And in the next video, we'll start running through the string and setting the pieces up on the board. So thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.